Have you ever compromised on your faith? Hi there, I'm Natty Anderson and you're listening to Unlocked, your daily key to unlocking God's word in your life. I'm interested in politics and government, and I love movies and shows where they get into the nitty gritties of plots, and I love listening to all the schemes that people have had. But listening to those schemes and then being in the middle of it are very different things. And compromises and plots often start with seemingly simple and seemingly harmless things and choices, but then they grow, right? And so as believers, we need to be on our guard against compromising situations. And today's tale talks just about that. It's called A Twisted Era by Natty Mayel. Princess Gale examined a few documents on her desk as General Blackgrove delivered his opinion. She attempted to appear disinterested. They weren't exactly allies. Between you and me, I believe there is sufficient evidence that you are ready to become queen, the general said in an undertone. Unfortunately, I don't think Runyon agrees. Really, Gale said dryly. If you promise me a position in the Mountain Army, I will support you, and, General Blackgrove added, measuring his words carefully, if I were to learn more about the future of your father's reign, I may be able to convince others to support you as well. Gail understood his meaning. She didn't particularly like him, but he had power. So she said, I will tell you this. My father's health is indeed waning. Soon he will be incapable of carrying out his duties. General Blackgrove seemed pleased, and after he left her study, Gail smiled to herself. What a cunning politician she was becoming. A knock sounded, and Runyon entered, his eyes shining. Gail beamed. I have General Blackgrove on my side. He wants a position in the mountains. The old council member smiled softly. Excellent. But... He said he didn't think you would recommend me, she laughed. Runyon shook his head. He thinks everyone is a snake like him. What did you tell him in exchange for his support? Gail looked away. I confirmed rumors about father. Runyon raised his brows. I thought no one was supposed to know. Pushing back her rising guilt, Gail said, I needed to build trust. At the next council meeting, Princess Gale was able to convince her father to move General Blackgrove to the Mountain Army. And then her father stood. I would like to propose that my daughter be my successor. She sat up straighter, expecting Runyon, General Blackgrove, and others to stand in support of her. But her smile faded as every one of her contacts remained silent. Runyon even made a statement that he didn't trust the king's judgment on account of his health. Gail's stomach dropped. After the council disbanded, she paced furiously in her chambers. After all I did for them, is no one true? She paused, catching a glimpse of her harried appearance in the mirror. Am I true? She wondered aloud. What what am I becoming? Betraying people for my own gain? Wait, my child. Do not despair, a voice whispered. Lord, Is that you? I am unchanging. I will not lie to you. I will not trick you. Though others deceive you and you might deceive others, I am true. I always have your best interests at heart. Relief flooded over Gail like a bucket of water, cool and refreshing. Will you trust me? How can I trust you? I can't even trust myself. I know you. I made you. I love you. I knew all your failures before you were born, and I purchased your forgiveness. I have all the power in the world, and yet I took the position of a servant and died a criminal's death for you. Come and walk with me. Let me teach you the good way. You do not need to grasp for power. I am working, even in the midst of this corruption, for the good of my people. 
So let's talk about this a little bit more together. The world has been broken by sin, so it's easy to compromise and give in to the broken systems and greed around us. We all sin and we all need forgiveness. That's why Jesus came. He loves us so much and he hates to see us hurting and deceiving each other. Through his death and resurrection, he made the way for us to be forgiven. And when Jesus returns, he will restore all things. As we wait for this glorious day, we may feel disoriented and unsteady because of the sin and brokenness around us and inside us. But we can always trust Jesus to be steady, honest, and loving. Who are trusted Christians in your life who could help you look to Jesus and follow Him when you're tempted to participate in corruption? Jesus didn't connive or deceive to grab power. He laid down his life for us and now he rules with self-sacrificial love and gentleness. How does Jesus' leadership contrast with the characters in today's story? What might it look like to follow Jesus in self-sacrificial love and gentleness? To dig deeper, read James 1-5. As you and I can read in James 1.17, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights with whom can be no variation nor turning shadow. Now I'd encourage you to read in your Bible, Romans 5, Philippians 2, 3 through 11, and Hebrews 13, 8, to keep God's word alive in your life. Unlocked is a resource of Keys for Kids Ministries. I had so much fun writing today's Devo. It was a great way for me to share what the Lord's been teaching me and what I've been wrestling with. Has the Lord been teaching you something new? Well, I wanna hear about it. Head over to unlocked.org and check out our writer's guidelines to find out how you can write for us. Also, be sure to check back for tomorrow's devotion, which is a poem with Dylan. But until then, I'm Natty, encouraging you to live life unlocked opening the door to God in your life.